guys, Haley Lane, aka Keep Black here, and welcome back to another episode of Off the Cuff. And this time, I'm gonna pick up on the discussion of Undertale with the genocide route of that game. Which, by its very name, you can tell if you haven't played Undertale, it's a pretty brutal way to play through the game. Undertale bills itself as the RPG where nobody has to die. Um but you can choose to kill characters as much as you like, and if you decide to take it to the extreme and go in the direct opposite direction of um, the way the game suggests itself to be played, you can unlock some very interesting things in the game. I feel like I ought to caveat this entire discussion with I never played the genocide route myself. As I mentioned before, after I played through the first pacifist route, like start to finish completion, got the true pacifist ending and everything, I didn't even want to open the game again. And when I started looking up other ways to play Undertale and what other people's experiences were with the game, that feeling that I don't want to even open the game again just kept intensifying. Once you play through the game and you get the true pacifist ending, Flowey will appear every time you reopen the game to be like, hey, can you just let the characters have their happy ending? Um, but you know, if not, I guess I'll see you soon, Kara, or you know, whatever it is you named your fallen human the first time, because turns out that name does not belong to Frisk, who is the fallen child that you're actually playing as throughout the game. The name that you assign the child belongs to the child who fell the first time. If it's not obvious, this discussion is going to be completely riddled with spoilers. There is no way to talk about this angle of the game without talking about spoilers. When I started watching other people playing through Undertale, I went through, you know, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, the Game Grumps when they finally got around to it. I think it was Steam Train first, actually. I'm not super savvy about all the people who play video games at this point as streamers, um, but I was looking at as many reactions as I could. And of course, one of the things I was really curious about, but I wasn't willing to do it myself, was the genocide route of Undertale, which is you basically go in and you try and kill as many people as you can find and you actively seek out more to kill as you're going through the game. It's not just a matter of whoever you encounter, you know, you, you attack, it's you have to ferret people out. It is exactly as disturbing as it sounds. All the charm of the game as you're playing through the first time, the wonderful music, all the character interactions, everything either warps dramatically or disappears completely. Even the music will stop at some point and just be replaced by this low droning. There's a serious sense of dread as you're playing through the game that way. Interestingly enough, playing the game this way actually turns it into the kind of RPG that I just don't like playing for gameplay reasons, which is it's very grindy. You have to go out of your way and spend a lot of time seeking out more monsters to fight and kill and gain EXP for. So, you know, in usual RPG form, this would mean you're gearing up for the next battle, you're getting stronger so that the next boss isn't as insanely difficult. But in Undertale, it flips it on its head, of course, so that by the time you reach the next boss after gaining crazy EXP, you're starting to burn through people and there's no challenge to the game anymore until you encounter Undyne. When I saw what happens with the Undyne fight in the genocide route, I was like, Oh man, <laughs> you really are playing the bad guy in this version of the game, huh? For one very shallow reason, I'm glad I didn't play through this game, this uh, this route myself because I, there's no way I would have been able to get through the Undyne fight. I am not nearly good enough a gamer to dodge all of the bullet hell that goes on in that battle. But the music is absolutely phenomenal. And as awful as it is to watch Undyne die at the end of that fight, it's really cool to see her step up and like genuinely be a true hero. You know, obviously I could talk a lot about the Sans battle and what that reveals for, uh, you know, other elements of the story that wouldn't get revealed in other ways to play the game. It seems you really only learn a little bit about Sans after you go through the more extreme routes of playing the game. And of course, he turns out to be one of the coolest characters at the end of the genocide route. Everybody on the internet, myself included, developed a massive crush on him at exactly the same time. And he's, of course, since become a huge meme. But that part aside, what really, really struck me about the genocide route was that long walkway as you're approaching Asgore in his castle. In other ways of playing the game, that's where you'll encounter the other monsters of the world uh, telling you the story of what happened with the first fallen child in the underground and how the royal family took him in and, you know, was a, he was basically adopted. But when you're playing through it in the darkest possible way, what you get instead is Flowey appearing to tell you the story about how Asriel died and awoke as a flower 
to his own horror. And he then goes into the most incredibly insightful and pointed description of how the player might have felt after finishing the game for the first time wanting more. He describes booting up the game again and deciding to try different ways of playing and interacting and eventually he decided to get a bit more aggressive to see well what happens if I push that button. And it is a delightfully disturbing look into how badly his mind got twisted and it's a mirror and a half to the player because that is almost precisely the thought process that went through my mind when I I started looking up uh, how else you can play the game. That became one of my favorite parts of watching the reactions of players doing this is the realization spreading on their face when they see that Flowey is describing them. <laughs> and not only that, Flowey goes on to describe not just the player in that case, but also anybody who's watching a stream or a recording of it. He'll say something like, well, you know, at least we're better than the people who won't even do it themselves and just want to watch someone else do it. I bet someone like that's watching right now, aren't they? I like freaked out when I saw that on the screen. I was like, no, Toby. But yeah, uh, good game. Very good game. I, again, highly recommend Undertale if you haven't played it for yourself. I'm not gonna fall into the trap of telling you how to play it for the first time. I used to do that, but in reality, it's one of those ones where the best way to experience it is just to do whatever you want with the game and see what happens. There are some really great and not at all preachy morals and messages that you can get out of the game by, you know, it'll respond to how you choose to play it and it'll give you a very appropriate message to cap things off at the end. I'd like to replay it at some point in the future, but I gotta kind of give it a rest for a little while because otherwise I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna remember everything too clearly. I want to see how much I can forget before I go through again and like try and look at it with fresh eyes to see what I missed the first time. But guys, thanks so much for listening and for watching. I think I'm gonna cap off the discussion there and I will see you guys in the next Off The Cuff video. Thanks again.